I love drawing sea turtles in the aquarium. Their movements are so fluid, so calm. You never guess the challenges these animals face in reaching adulthood. So I found this footage that shows how many species of sea turtles are born in soft, sandy shores of the Caribbean. After 45 days incubating in the sand, the babies hatch and make their way to the sea. Hold on, Paul. So how are soft, sandy beaches a challenge to turtles? <laughs> or, or anyone, for that matter? Well, if you think about how more heat is being trapped in the atmosphere due to human activity, this birthing story runs into problems. You see, the eggs that are on the bottom are in cooler sand and tend to hatch male sea turtles, while the eggs on top are warmer and tend to hatch females. As average temperatures heat up, the sand on the bottom of the pit gets warmer, which means more and more female turtles hatch. Ah, so, so more female sea turtles, and fewer males, can be a challenge. Right, Sam. The numbers are out of balance, and getting more out of balance as average annual temperatures rise. And this isn't the only challenge for these animals. Like other animals I found on my trip to the aquarium, sea turtles are migratory. The Kemp's Ridley sea turtle, for instance, goes north for the summer and then south in the winter, sometimes a round trip of several thousand miles. But the trip south can be another challenge for them, especially if they summer in places like the Cape Cod Bay. Here, the water stays temperate well into the late fall or winter, but there can be a sudden cold snap, and this bay water can drop down below 50 degrees. The turtles are then stunned. That is, they are too cold to swim anymore. Every year, these cold, stunned Kemp's Ridleys wash up on the shores of beaches such as Cape Cod, often unconscious and battered. But there's still hope for them. A team of rescue volunteers jump into action. For example, here we see Orion, one of those Kemp's Ridley sea turtles being rushed to an aquarium hospital for treatment. He's immediately put on a ventilator when he gets there, and once stable, veterinarians take an x-ray. If you look closely, you can see something is going on in his lungs. That, that cloudy area in the left lung there? Yep, that's pneumonia. But even with pneumonia, the veterinary team has a plan for full recovery. Biopsies, CAT scans, antibiotics, and even a turtle treadmill. And after six months, Orion's pneumonia clears up, and he's released into the Cape Cod Bay and begins the long journey home with a little GPS to see if he stays on track. Do turtles often get lost on such a long journey? <laughs> no, Sam. The GPS gives scientists data on their migratory patterns. Actually, sea turtles have an amazing sense of direction. In fact, when they reach their own parenting age, at around 10 years old, they know how to make it back to the very beach where they were first born. And here again, a hotter atmosphere can make for another big challenge. More CO2 in the atmosphere thickens that blanket, trapping more heat and making oceans hotter and higher. Higher oceans mean less beach for the sea turtles. So some turtles make the long journey home to find that their birth beach is no longer there. Sadly true. But to alleviate this challenge to the turtles, there are some things that we can do every day to reduce our blanket creating output. Just like the volunteers on the beaches of Cape Cod, many communities are pulling together to change their routines and habits, to produce less carbon and keep the turtles' beaches above water. 